Thank you, Heather. Um, you said you'll pass on to David, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going first. So I'm not David, I'm Fred. Um, <coughs> yeah, thank you all very much for coming. Um, I'm assuming that many of you are familiar with the APPP. <coughs> uh, now, the APPP had partners or has partners in six countries across the world, uh, in Africa, Europe, um, the United States. Um, in Europe, we have ODI and IDS at Sussex. <coughs> then uh, we have partners also at the University of Marseille. Uh, development research and training, a research and advocacy NGO in Uganda. Uh, we then have Lasdale in Niamey, in Niger. Uh, CDD in Ghana and the Center for African Studies at the University of Florida. <coughs> now, um, those are the photos of the people who headed the research at their respective centers, Bernard at uh, DRT, then uh, Jean-Pierre Olivier at C uh, Lasdell, uh, Kojo, CDD, uh, Leonardo at the University of uh, Florida. <coughs> um, and it, the APPP has done its work in almost 20 countries across the African continent <coughs> um, and has done this work uh, through seven research streams, one of which is the Af uh, business and politics, headed by Tim Kessel, um, the cotton sector reforms, headed by Renata Serra, parliamentarians, headed by Jima Boadi, <coughs> Uh, the local government stream by Diana Kama. Uh, state and bureaucracies by Giorgio Blundo. Uh, local justice, uh, Richard Crook. Uh, uh, parental rep preferences and religious education, Mahaman Tijani Alou, who co headed it with uh, Leonardo de Villeon from uh, the University of Florida. Most of those people are not here, but Richard <laughs> is cooking. <laughs> yeah, Richard is sitting right here. Um, we started off the research with a number of hypotheses. Um, one was that the neo-patrimonial systems are much more varied than is commonly supposed. Good governance does not specify very well qualities that are important for development, and better results would be achieved or obtained by working with the grain of African societies. Now we have a number of headline, head, uh, headline findings from the research streams. Now we found the differences between more developmental and less developmental forms of new patrim patrimonialism are really important. <coughs> and there are several reasons why we say this. It's because economic transformation or capitalist development will begin in Africa as it did in Asia and Europe under new patrimonial auspices. And prior achievement of good governance is not a necessary condition for this to happen. In the APP countries, uh, study countries, the provision of public goods is crucially affected by a number of factors, one of which is the extent of policy coherence, the degree to which providers are disciplined, the space for local problem solving. Current forms of developmental neopatrimonialism do, do much better than average <coughs> in these respects. Now going on to the second headline findings, uh, under normal conditions, democratization produces competitive clientelism that is too short-termist to be developmental. So as a, rule, citizen vote, as a rule, citizen and voter power are weak drivers of state performance. In spite of everything, however, problem-solving initiatives and local reforms do take place in these countries. <coughs> and when they succeed, they often take the form of practical hybrids 
by way of modern state capabilities adapting to local preferences. So what does all this mean? I'm going to pass on to David to take us on from here. 